Okay, cool. Oop, maybe got some better. Yeah, the school's doing all this refillable ink markers that suck. So I'm gonna buy my own markers. So let me see. Um, yeah, this is that one shirt I want to get. What's the what's the Pythagorean theorem? Who remembers that? Uh, oh, somebody slapping themselves. Square. A. So you got a nice A B. You always want to make sure that C is the what? Who remembers it all? Hypotenuse. Hypotenuse. The one across from the largest angle is the largest side because it opens the most. So here's a really cool visual. I've drawn this way too, but let me draw a small one here. Here's a really cool kind of visual proof, sort of. Not really proof, but a way to remember it. If I drew a square off the side of that. So it's a square, so it's A by A. What's the area of this gonna be? What's the area of the square? A squared. A squared, right? Length times width. So if I do another one for B, what's the area of the square here? B squared, right? B by B. You guys with me? I guess what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to draw a square off of the side. Just pretend like it's a square. This is C squared. The area of that square plus the area of that square is the area of that square. There's a really cool video on YouTube with like water. He fills this up, this thing up with water, and if he turns it, these two fill up perfectly with the amount of water that's in the other one. I know how, the way I say water, by the way. Sometimes I say H2O so my students can pay attention. Um, do you understand what I'm saying? So if you fill this with water and you turn this thing around, it's all self, it's all contained. That just flows into the other ones perfectly. So that area equals the other areas. Because it's the Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem. This is one visualization. One of the Roosevelt's, one of our presidents, one of his favorite hobbies was to prove the Pythagorean theorem in different ways. And there's like, he did like 53 proofs. There's about thousand proofs of the freaking thing. There's all different ways to prove it. Yeah. Anyway, so we're not going to focus on proving it. I just wanted to remind you about it and give you a way to, the squares all have to add up to be each other, right? The small square plus the other square has equal the big ass square. Yeah. Trying to make sense. I like it. Obviously, it can't be A plus B equals C. The only way that A plus B would equal C is if they were in a straight line and then it wouldn't be a triangle. Okay, okay. So, let me ask you this. If I had a triangle that was a right triangle, it's got to be a right triangle, uh, where this side is 2 and this side is 7, can you guys figure out that side? I want the exact answer. An exact answer normally means you don't use a calculator. Calculators give you approximations. They suck. They're not as good as us. We're better than them. What is the Pythagorean theorem again? A squared plus B squared. Like we just said, the square of the A plus the square of the B equals the square of the C. Thinking about that picture, the squares you could draw off the sides, their areas have to be equal. What's the C side in this one? What's the C side? Oh, the C side. No. What, what's the C side? Which one? Is it 2? Is it 7? No, it's the thing we don't know. All right. So how do you use this formula then? What goes in for A and B? It doesn't really matter which is which. What goes in for A? What goes in for B? 2 squared plus. Yeah, 2 goes in for A, sure. 7 goes in for B. And I don't know what C is. That cannot be difficult. It's just identifying the things and throwing them in the formula that relates them all. I like it. So there are formulas that relate things, uh, uh, sides or areas or whatever, formulas that relate things. And I've got, all i got to do is figure out where to put the information I know to figure out the information I don't know. That's how a lot of math is applied. So what do you get? You get 4 plus 49, 53. 
root. Square root. And it's the positive root because it's got to be a side. Because remember, there's two roots to 53, positive one, negative one. But we picked the positive one because it's a freaking side length. And when I say exact answer, people don't think this. But this is the exact answer. Any number you give me off the calculator is an approximation. It's got to stop. And this little bit and goes on forever. Yes? So if you just put 53, it would be wrong? Yeah, if you put 53, it's completely wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, there are certain triangles where the sides are beautiful whole numbers, right? Most of them are going to be kind of gross square roots like this. Most of them, because there are a bunch of squares in this equation. So, of course, they're going to come out gross. But does somebody know a triangle where the sides are nice, on the right triangle where the sides are nice whole numbers? Anybody three, know? Four, five. Three, four, five. Let's prove that one. So, there's a three, four, five triangle. Not surprised they call it the Pythagorean triple. <laughs> and sure enough, what's 3 squared? 9 plus 4 squared, 16. 9 plus 16 is 25, which is 5 squared. That doesn't happen very often. There's another one, 5, 12, 13. Yes? I have a question for that. Can you say, what else 25 squared? Would the answer just be 5 instead of 5 squared? Say again, sir? Wouldn't the answer just be 5 instead of 5 squared? Yeah, 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 but how do I make sure this works? 3 squared plus 4 squared has to equal 5 squared. Remember, what, what are the sides of this ABC, but what's the equation? The square of A plus the square of B equals the square of C. So you wouldn't leave it as like 25, like how you left that one? So, so here I'm not solving for anything, right? I know the sides are 3, 4, 5. Just to show that it works, I plug it in. 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. That's to check it. Is that true? Yes. Check. I'm not solving for a side. Here I'm solving for a side. I better give the side answer, not the square of the side as the answer. Okay, I like it. I like it. Very often on like an SAT or something, they'll have a triangle problem, but it's based on one of these. So you shouldn't have to use the whole formula. You should just be able to, like if I told you there's a right triangle where this is six and this is eight, and somebody tell me what that side is. Look at that one. Look at that one. Six oh. instead of three, eight instead of four, so ten. ten. It's twice as big as a three, four, five triangle. You can just use a multiple to get it up there. Poop. All right. So obviously this section is in this chapter because it deals with square roots. That's the whole point of this chapter. I like that. Now here's an application of Pythagorean theorem you don't immediately think of, but it's to find the distance between two points. Distance between two points. Can you guys uh, take a minute, graph these two points for me? Yeah, sure. One, negative four. And... Uh, let's see, uh, three, uh, six. Okay, now if I ask you to find the distance between those two, it's not simple. If that one was here, that would be simple. I could just count how many tick marks apart they are. Does that make sense? This question is not nearly as simple, but can you guys see, like if this was my house, this is somebody else's house, especially in like Salt Lake City. I don't know if they've ever been to Salt Lake City, but it's total grid. It's crazy. So I'd go over to and up, whatever. 
so do you see what I what kind of shape I make when I do that? I go this way and go up. Yeah, so I'm really just trying to figure out this length. So it's just a, and what kind of triangle is it? It's a right triangle, of course, because it's X and Y. Those are right angles to each other. Does that make sense right there? Yes. How long, so what do I need to know then? You need to know how long this side is. Well, how long is that side? How long is this side? Two. Y2, because 3 minus 1 is 2. It's, it's 3 to 1. It's from 1 to 3, right? Mm -hmm. So this is 3 minus 1. It's 2. How long is this side? You can count. But what's a more mathematical way of doing it? 6 minus, minus negative, negative four. 4. So 6 plus 4. 10? Yes. Obviously, it's 10. Cool. You can just count it. This is 6, and this is another 4, so of course it's 10. But mathematically, that would be 6 minus negative 4. So that's 10. So then how do you figure out this side, then? Uh, yeah, go ahead, take a minute. Figure out the length of this side. I'm going to call this D instead of C. Why? For D for distance. So it would be 2 square plus 10 square equals D square. You get 104. So square root of that. Oh, you guys are going to love this next step. Square root of 53. Remember the answer we got earlier? 53 is a prime number. There's no, oh well, I can't do anything with this. 104 I could do something with. Yeah, what, is, what goes into 104 that's important for square root? Four. Four. Right. Square root of 104 is four times, it's one more four than 100, so it's 25 fours make 100, so that's 26 fours. Make 104, because it's one more four. So I get two rad 26 is the distance between those two points. Where'd you get the 26 from? 4 times 26 is 104. Okay. So I took 104. Remember simplifying radicals? Square root of 104, I can break it up as 4 times 26. Square root of 4, I can do. Square root of 26, I don't know. Yes? Oh, what's the square root of 4? No. Oh, here. How wide is this base of this triangle? Well, what's it go? It goes from 1 to 3. So how wide is it then? 2. From 1 to 3? Yeah. See how it goes from 1 to 3 on the x-axis? Isn't the x-axis the one that controls this guy? That's left and right. So, let's make a formula out of this that I can just plug shit into instead of having to do this every time. I don't want to have to draw this picture every time I get two points. I want to make a formula that captures what we just did. So where'd that, where, I love it. I love this question. Where did that 2 come from? The difference in the x's, right? Mm -hmm. How would I find the slope between these? This kind of feels like a slope. It would be x2 minus x1, right? Under y2 minus y1. You guys remember that? So how did I find the 2? It was x2 minus x1. So if they give me, if they just give me x1, y1, and x2, y2, they just give me two points and they ask me to find the distance between them. Let's create the formula that I can just plug shit into and get the answer. Right? Doesn't that sound nice? That's what math does. It says, why do I want to do all this shit every single time? Let's just make one thing that captures the answer to this. It sounds beautiful. Why did you use multiple um, Uh, Because that's the only pair that has a number I can actually do something with. All right? There's no other number that goes into 104 that I can take the square root of. You can try it. Okay. 
How do I know that? Because it's 2 times 2 times 2 times 13. That's what it is, right? If you want to break it all the way down. But me, I just say, what goes into 104 that I can do the square root of? Well, 4 goes in, right? And then 26 I can't do shit with. That's that skill we should have going in. Yes? Uh, what was your reasoning for uh, just knowing that 4 goes into that? Uh, 4 goes into 100. Mm -hmm. So 4 definitely goes into 104. It's just 4 more. Okay. Yeah. Quick little side note. Like, if I had to reduce 60 over 96, right? How far apart are those? 36. 36. So what goes into both of them, if anything, has to be things that go into 36. Six. Like 6. I don't know if you guys, or even maybe 12. Right? That goes into six, not 36. You guys? Why is that? Because start counting in terms of 6. 6, 12, 18. How far apart are they? 6. How far apart are these? 12. 12. I mean, so if two numbers are a certain distance apart, the only thing that could possibly go into both of those is something that goes into that distance between them. That's kind of interesting. It's a really useful thing to use when I'm trying to reduce some big ass ugly fraction. All right, that sort of happened here. Okay. Well, I don't know if you guys remember the rule. Four goes into what kind of number? Any number where the last two digits are divisible by four. That's the rule for four. We talked about that earlier in the semester, I think. All right. So here, here's the full balloon. This is x2 minus x1. Is that cool? That's how we figured out this is 2 is the just difference in the x's. That's how wide that thing is. So, of course, this is going to be? 10. In general, this was x2 minus x1. If, if, oh, was there anything I did? Was there anything I did that was special because I gave us a special point? No. I would do the same thing I did here every time. So what math says is I should be able to capture the idea with the formula. That's what formulas are. So I have to do all this work every time. Math goes. Let me just do that work once with ugly things. Sure, x two, x one, x you know, x one, x y one, x two, y two. So what's this? What's that? What's this then? Why is it ten? Because it was the it was the difference in the... Yes, cool. Just like slope right here, right? Slope is all about how far over, how far up. Distance is all about the length of this side, the length of that side. They feel very similar. So then what would the Pythagorean theorem say? It would say this side is this side squared plus this side squared. That's exactly what we did. So if you really want to get technical then, the true formula for distance between two points involves some big ass square root. That's the distance formula. Uh, hopefully that looks familiar to somebody. That is the distance formula between two points. Here, well, I'll catch up with people that just came in. I want you guys to find the distance between these points. Yeah, why is it the same thing? Because what shape did we make? That's why we did it. Yeah, yeah. That's why we did this work. And that's why this looks like the Pythagorean theorem, because it is the Pythagorean theorem. Because I would make a triangle. Yeah, I like it. That was my point. Let me see who just came in. So... Thank you. 
be on a way. Who else? Anybody else uh, didn't get their test back? Oh, Tara. Normally for these problems, I'm going to ask you to give me the answer in radical form. In the homework, they might ask you a few times, because it makes sense. Uh, with some physical problems, if they tell you this thing is located here and this thing is located, how far apart are they? If I ask you how far apart are our houses and you say seven square root of two miles, again, I'm going to look at you funny, right? If I said that, you might be like, let's tone that down. I'm talking to humans right now, Chuck. So the distance, so the distance, square roots, what would go in this one? Um, Doesn't really matter which way you go. Negative three negative minus three one. one. Sure. Negative three minus one squared. If you went the other way, isn't it going to be the same thing? It's going to be one minus negative three. It's going to be four squared to 16. Either way you do it, you're going to get a 16 here. So it really doesn't matter which way you put those. Plus... If I want to do this way, 5 minus negative 2 squared. So you get the square root of squared is 16 plus 7 squared is 49. Is the square root of 65. 65. 65 is 5 times 13. It ain't going nowhere. So it just stays there. But you do have to look at it real quick and see if you can simplify it at all. This one won't. Done. Now, if you want to put on human mode, you put that in the calculator. Can somebody tell me it's going to be a little bit more than... What's the square root of 65? It should be a little bit more than... What's the square root of 64? 8. eight. So square root of 65 is a little more than... 8. eight. I like it. And what about this one, you guys? Oh. This one's really nice. They give you intercepts. That's really kind of nice, because each of these are just going to have one number in them. That's kind of nice, right? A zero just kind of gets out the way. Here, it'd be negative 3 minus 0 squared is 9. 0 minus 7 or 7 minus 0 squared is just 49. You've got to love it when they give you intercepts. So this is just the square root of 58. 58. And 58 is 2 times 29. That ain't going nowhere. So we, again, that's the last thing is just can I simplify this? It's like, give me an answer as a fraction of 7 over 21. I'm like, shit, got to take a point off. Got to reduce that sucker. Same thing with radicals. If 
If it came out to be square root of 104 and you stop there, you're going to lose a point. You're supposed to take one more step. You've got to reduce that slightly. Yes? So how, how do we know when, when to reduce them? If it works. If I can reduce it. How did I know I could reduce 104? Because 4, which is a square number, goes into 104. So I can do something to a piece of it. 58 is 2 times 29. Neither one of those can go further. They're not squares. Do you see? Yeah. And then here, uh, square root of 65, same thing. That's 5 times 13. Neither one of them is squares. Neither one of them can be broken down further. Yeah. Is, it, is that cool? Just like knowing or not that you have to reduce a fraction. It's a very similar <coughs> skill. Okay. How do you guys feel about that? I mean, that's, in the grand scheme of things, that's relatively nice compared to some other stuff we've done, right? Or not. Okay. You guys, I can't, I'm definitely not going to try to read your emotions today because you're all a little bummed out. As always, when you get a test back and it's, the grade is a different number than you wanted it to be, are you being realistic? Are you doing everything you're supposed to be doing? Are you turning in homework but it's not really yours? Do you understand what I'm saying? Are you going to see tutors? Should you be? Are you coming to see me in my office? I'm in here right before the class starts. Some of you guys do come and it seems to help. Right? If you're tired of listening to me talk, go to the tutors, right? Get some other perspective. If you're not doing any of that stuff, do not be surprised when you fail. I mean, that's, it takes a little bit of work on your part. I'm working my ass off. I need you guys to do the same if you want to pass. Um, whatever, Jeff. All right. One last thing in that section, and this is kind of a silly, quick thing. Um, let me see if you guys can figure this out. See how you have a midpoint? Say I want to know the middle, let's say if I just have two numbers. Let me start off here because people seem to not remember how to do it. Just two numbers, not two points. I want to know the middle number between the two numbers. So what's the middle number between 5 and 11? What's in between 5 and 11? Perfectly in between. 8. What's the quick, exact way to do this? Some of you guys are like, let me think now. Seven is not, it's too far away from, no, no. There's a mathematical way to get the answer very quickly. What number is the middle of all the other numbers? You take the average. I know what you're talking about, like the middle number. Uh, but in terms of value, would be the average. So what's the average of these two? Five plus 11 is 16 divided by two? Eight. So it'll work. So, because I could give you like, what about here? What's the middle of 6.17 and 9.003? Yeah, have fun just trying to, let me see, what you do this No, so what do you do? You add them together and divide by two. It's crazy. So add them together and divide by two. 15.173, seven point, Five, eight, one, five. Is that right? I'm okay if it's not. It's early. Okay. Nobody's trying. Okay. You guys like? Sounds good, Jeff. Whatever you say, Jeff. No? Is that right? Yeah. Seven point five. That's correct. Five, eight, six, five. Yeah. So close. Okay. All right, now, what if I have two actual points? I want to know. I want to know the middle point. What's right in the middle? If I connect them with a line, what is that point that cuts that line in half? The little line segment. So it's kind of crazy how easy this is. So if I have two points, oh, poor little dude. Uh, let's say negative four and five, and uh, six and. Three, sure. The midpoint, this is too good to believe. The midpoint is the average x, comma, average y. That's it. 
So how would I average the x's in general? It would be x1 plus x2 divided by 2. y1 plus y2 divided by 2. That's the midpoint formula. It's the average x's, the average y's. That's the middle point between the two points. Which section is Same one, 10, oh, uh, 10, 70. 10, 70. So this would be negative uh, 4 plus 6 divided by 2. 5 plus 3 divided by 2. This is, this is 2 divided by 2 is 1. 8 divided by 2 is 4, so the point 1, 4 is perfectly in the middle of these two points. Yes? So how would you check that answer? Like, uh, you could graph it. You can kind of see if it looks about right. You have to get the slope in the one. Yeah, you could find the distance. <coughs> if you really wanted to check it. You could find the distance between these two and make sure it's the same as the distance between those two. That's really the check for what's the middle point. Does that make sense? So, so wherever, so negative 4, 5 is over here, 6, 3 is over here, 1, 4 is right there, roughly. So if I saw this distance equal to this distance, that would make me feel pretty good about that being the middle point. It's got to be equidistant from both other points. Now, now, additionally, it's got to be on that line. Oh, man. Oh, man. You guys are already happy about everything today. Let me, let me see if I can blow your minds a little bit. How many points are there that are equidistant from those two points? You understand what I mean by that? The same distance from each point. There's the midpoint, you know, like right there, roughly, right? Same distance. But then there's every point on this line. This point is the same distance from those points. This point is the same distance from those points. There's a line that runs right down the middle of them, and that's all the points that are the same distance away. It's just not the midpoint because it's not the one where you go straight across to. Right? It's got to be on that line. I don't know. You guys kind of get that idea? It's a nifty idea. If you don't get this idea, you're fine. I was just pushing it a little bit. Yes? It'll always kind of be diagonalish. Or is it just a line? It's got to be that, yeah, it's got to be that line that goes perfectly through this and that's equidistant from both of those. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you knew this guy's slope, this would be the negative reciprocal slope. It's perfectly perpendicular. If you don't quite get that, all right. I'm just trying, for the people that do, it's a nifty idea. Okay. So any questions on that? Is Pythagorean theorem, an immediate use for Pythagorean theorem was a distance formula. And this little dude is just a little thing they threw in there, the midpoint. Its formula is really nice and easy. you got to know them all. Okay. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you uh, like a preparatory video. They have a whole series in this, uh, with this video, yeah. Um, so on the test you'd say uh, find the midpoint or yes. find the distance? Yes, totally. Okay. More than likely, I'll give you two points, and I'll say find the distance between the two. Mm -hmm. Find the midpoint of the two, right? Just to play around with those points as much as you can. Okay. I like it. I'm also going to have some triangle problems. Use the Pythagorean theorem directly. This poor little dude gets tired. mistake one semester of taping this. And I got copyright notice from YouTube on that ocean. Although it is on YouTube anyway. Let's see if I have it under here. Nope. If you write anything on your computer, you need to get Grammarly. I write pretty much all the... Let's see. That's kind of loud. All right, guys. It's not a very long video. 
Can somebody turn off one of those lights? Thanks, man. I know it's. Are we already on? We're already on dim, really? There we go. That's better than dim. Thank you. Uh, so we're about to get into complex numbers, which are imaginary numbers and real numbers put together. Um, people often think imaginary numbers, they think that the name is correct. The name's stupid. When they first come up with negative numbers, like this guy's going to talk about it a little bit, people didn't believe they existed, <coughs> negative numbers. And nowadays, you would look like somebody, somebody like that, like they belong with the flat earthers. If you're a flat earther, by the way, you're in the right place in college. Hopefully, you'll get catch up. Um, you guys kind of with me. So and this, I love this. This finally gives you a little bit of a taste of what they really are. They're not imaginary at all. They're not. You know, all right, so let me just show you. This Is this introduction to 10.8? Yes. Okay. There you go. Here we go. We were given the function f of x is equal to x squared plus 1. We can graph our function and get a nice parabola. Now, let's say we want to figure out where the equation equals 0. We want to find the roots. On our plot, this should be where the function crosses the x-axis. As we can see, our